Hey, that's not a phone. So this specific Mac mini is from mid 2011 and it's got an i5 inside of it, eight gigs of DDR3 RAM. And I've actually upgraded the hard drive inside of this thing to a 256 gig SSD. So we're gonna boot this thing up to Mac OS High Sierra, which is officially the latest version this can run. Then after testing performance and app compatibility, we're gonna use Open Core Legacy Patcher to force this thing onto Mac OS Sequoia and just see how badly it runs. Steve Jobs wasn't kidding when he said, bring your own display keyboard and mouse. I gotta supply everything. All right, so we wanna install Mac OS High Sierra from the internet internet installer so let's do option command r and turn the mac on oh okay i misremembered it's 128 gigs all right let, let's just erase it just for good measure just wipe the solid state drive so now we can go back and install mac os to set up the installation of mac os high sierra click continue oh yeah i'm totally gonna read that let's install it to the drive we just wiped and now we just wait Installation just stopped and now it's loading again. Not sure if this is a good or bad sign. Ooh, there we go, some actual information. And after that relatively easy process, here we are with a full Mac OS High Sierra install. Let's set it up. We gotta accept terms and conditions, but the agree button is blocked out. I, I guess we just hit more. All right, we gotta scroll down all the way to the bottom and it's still grayed out. What? How do I just accept it? Okay, well, never mind then. I can't agree to the terms and conditions, so I guess we'll just not use an Apple ID. Another terms and conditions page? Oh, oh, this one I can agree to. Oh, okay, I see it. Just tell me what to type here. Got it. Seems kind of insecure to make the password new password, but okay. Analytics, I mean, you guys probably don't even read the analytics for High Sierra anymore. And setting up your Mac. And here we are, the Mac OS High Sierra desktop. Uh, you, you see the window, it's like ghosting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's apparently a bug. That's apparent. The first thing I'm doing, I see a bug. I guess first things first is to open up Safari and start downloading some apps. Is Google Chrome still supported on this version? Oh, okay. Apparently not. Uh, this device won't receive updates because Google Chrome no longer supports your operating system. I mean, it's not going to stop me from trying it out. It's been taking like two minutes to verify Google Chrome.dmg. What exactly are you verifying? Oh yeah, sorry, not to glaze Mac OS, but installing apps on this platform is just so simple. Okay, so now that we have Chrome installed, we had the Launchpad and- Oh man, <laughs> this Launchpad is so good. I hate that they removed it in Tahoe. Google Chrome is an application downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? What? Where else would I get applications? Okay, apparently the last Chrome version to support High Sierra is 116. What's the modern one out right now? Oh, we're on 145. Okay, so yeah, we're a bit behind. Okay, but hopefully this shouldn't affect our browsing experience that much, right? Let's try out some YouTube. Mm, yeah, I can start to see a bit of the lag here. YouTube is working pretty well on this device, but I mean, it's 480p. That, that's really not a challenge for this. Straight to 4K. Suffer. Okay, so YouTube in 4K... Hold on, just... Would you shut up? Man, that guy's annoying. But playing this video at 4K, the Mac Mini is honestly doing really well. It just stutters like every like 30 seconds or so, but after that, it's still good to go. However, just playing this video is taking up like 82% of our CPU, so don't do stuff in the background if you're going to be watching 4K YouTube on this Mac. Oh, you know what? Now that we're not locked into setup, we could actually probably log in with our iCloud account. And yeah, perfect. We're logged into iCloud on this device. Kind of surprised it still works. All right, now I'm a bit curious. Can we use like the ecosystem features with a phone on iOS 26 and the Mac from a version from 2017? On 26, we select this, hit copy, and then we hit command V. Oh, it doesn't seem to be working. All right, power cycle Bluetooth on both devices. Let's try it again. Yeah, still nothing. That's unfortunate. What about AirDrop? AirDrop doesn't seem to want to work either, which nah, that's unfortunate. Now, one thing I didn't realize about old Mac OS is there actually is like window snapping. It's just like in a weird Apple way. You, you got to hold down the green button, right? And then it gets you into this mode and you can snap one window to the side and then another one to the other side. It's it's not exactly like freeform, but it, it's it's good enough, I guess. Those other continuity features didn't work. Will, uh, will iMessage help? I'm on an Intel Mac. So while the other Apple continuity features don't work, at least iMessage doesn't. You can still text people. I just got the message on my Tahoe Mac. Aside from watching the videos and browsing the web, people also play games on their computers. So let's try out something like Roblox. We're trying to play the game, but we got to download the app file first and hopefully it's still supported. Uh-oh, <laughs> what just happened in the background? The entire desktop flickered. And Roblox actually launches. I'm surprised. I was expecting it to be dropped for this platform. All right, let's, uh, let's launch the game and see how well it runs. 
or how poorly. Roblox has a handy FPS counter built in. All you gotta do is hit shift and F5. The only GPU inside this thing is the iGPU on the Core i5 this has. So yeah, we're definitely gonna turn down some of the settings. Yeah, and let's also crank this all the way down. In full 1080p, the game runs at around like 30 frames a second, but frequently drops way below that. I bet we can get some more frame rate out of this thing if we just get out a full screen and make the window smaller so it has less to render. At a lower resolution, Roblox goes from average 20 to average 40, pretty good. Now at this point, you'd honestly be better off just plugging a keyboard and mouse into any Android phone, but if you want to play Roblox on Mac OS, this is still an okay option. How did I, how did I kill that guy? Oh wow, okay, alright, yeah, I'm done with this game. Next up, what about Steam? I mean, I think this version still supports 32-bit apps, right? For some weird reason, Steam just doesn't want to work on this. Like, I click on it, it shows that it's updating, it bounces in the taskbar, and then doesn't do anything. Maybe a quick restart will fix that. After rebooting, Google Chrome has just added their entire office suite to my desktop, but okay, thanks. All right, that explains it. Uh, I'm looking at my phone and turns out back in 2024, Steam just killed support for this Mac OS version, so we just can't use it. So overall, Mac OS High Sierra, still a pretty responsive and decent experience on this device. Only issue is the app support as usual on Apple devices that get a bit aged. But unlike iOS, we can update this thing past the officially supported version with Open Core Legacy Patcher. So let's fire that up. All right, so first things first, we gotta grab the Open Core Legacy Patcher app file. And now we just open Launchpad, and yep, there it is. And using this removable drive, we're gonna create a bootable macOS Sequoia installer. And yeah, the maximum is Sequoia, so let's use that. After 10 minutes, create macOS installer, you bet. Install macOS Sequoia, and there you go, there's the USB stick. Creating macOS installers can take 30 minutes plus. Okay, all right, see you then. I come back to the computer a couple minutes later and the thing fails because the drive is too small. Whoops. Okay, so I, I don't really have another USB stick that's bigger than that, so I could just use this SD card and this USB-C dock. And this Mac doesn't natively support USB-C, so I gotta use a dongle for a dongle. All right, well, let's waste another hour doing this. We can just use the installer that we already have, so hopefully it's faster this time. Okay, 40 minutes later, installer is finished. So now we just gotta install OpenCore to the disk itself. OpenCore is finished installing to disk. You will need to reboot and hold the option key and select OpenCore Boot EFI's option. Would you like to reboot? All right. Ooh, there we go. Okay, and EFI boot. Uh, that, that's the High Sierra installer, I guess. Yeah, let's just go with that. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should supposed to hit the other option. All right, let's do this for a third time. I don't remember what Untitled is. I, I think that's maybe the SSD. Let's just hit it and see what happens. Okay, so so both options lead to the same place? What? Okay, so I, I've tried this dongle, right? I, I've tried this SD card here. Nothing is working. So you know what? <laughs> Screw those. Let's just use another flash drive. I mean, at this point, I should really just buy myself a 32 gig USB stick, but it's like 4 a.m., okay? Nothing's open. Let's go! Another hour of waiting! Woo! <laughs> Please work this time. All that work paid off. Now we can actually get to installing the cool operating system. To set up the installation of macOS Sequoia, click continue. Okay, you get the pinwheel of death, not a good sign. Oh, okay, just took a while. After that's done loading, we get the choice to install it on our SSD, which... Don't I want to wipe this first, or... Actually, no, we installed OpenCore on it. Let's just, let's just continue. All right, and finally, after all that time, we have macOS Sequoia installing, which is going to take more time to install, so I'll see you in another hour. All right, the install finished successfully, so all we have to do is just boot into our Sequoia install. Well, I mean that, and we have to install the root patches, but let's just get set up first. First time I'm actually hearing this thing's fans kick on. And we are now officially inside macOS Sequoia, and this is actually like an upgrade. It didn't like reinstall everything. This is the same account from the thing I had on High Sierra. I have a feeling like waiting like five minutes for everything to load is going to be like a kind of consistent theme when it comes to this operating system. We're only on the accessibility page and the thing's fans are like cranked to max. Me personally, I could use some accessibility for my cognitive function, but I guess we'll just hit not now. Your Mac has been updated to Sequoia. Future software updates will automatically be downloaded and installed. Uh oh, I better turn that off. I don't want Tahoe on this. Welcome to Mac and the graphic <laughs> and the graphic is broken. We can definitely boost our performance with the post install root patch though. All right, and start. What, did, did the app just crash or is it doing it in the background? I can't tell. Oh yeah, no, it's active on the CPU. Okay, I'm just gonna let the computer sit for a sec. This patch will give us GPU drivers and wireless drivers. So oh, I had no idea. I was just using ethernet the entire time. And here's the last step we need before we can actually start using the operating system. And here we are, running the latest version of Sequoia on this 2011 Mac Mini. <laughs> it's kind of impressive. Compared to High Sierra though, I'm starting to notice everything just takes forever here. 
Oh, oh, give it a second. It's loading. Come on, just show me general, please. There, there we go. So now that we updated Mac OS, can we actually use the continuity features? I'm using notes on an iPhone with the same Apple ID the Mac's logged into, and I see it popping up in the taskbar for handoff. So if I copy this now, universal clipboard should work, right? Ooh, there we go, perfect. AirDrop also works now. So updating to Sequoia has made this thing way more usable if you're interested in the Apple ecosystem, but what about the actual performance on the system itself? Let's fire up some YouTube. Oh yeah, that's right, Chrome can actually be updated to a modern version. Now I would just update Chrome, but the version for High Sierra was so old I had to just reinstall it completely. Ooh, I was gonna launch Chrome, but there's iPhone mirroring. Does, does this actually work with the Mac? Ooh, yeah, I think we're missing like some kind of hardware that's not available on the older Macs, unfortunately. Hey, at the very least, the Apple nagging has a nice background blur to it now. Just me, or does the uh, does the web actually seem faster on this version? I wasn't expecting that. Unsurprisingly, 1080p video is completely stutter-free on this device, but again, let's try 4K and see how badly it works. Performance is also similar to High Sierra as well. It stutters every so often, but it, nothing that makes it completely unwatchable. What about Roblox, though? Come on, we have to see some performance drops. Ooh, alright, yeah, this is where the lag starts. Just like typing in text, it's just starting to slow down. Come on. Any second now, there, there you go. Before we even get into the game, Arsenal already seems to be running worse. The FPS is like at around 18. Inside the actual game though, it's, yeah, like low 20s. Not even actually, it's dipping into the 15s. All right, let's lower the resolution and make this thing windowed. Yeah, this is much more playable at around like 30 frames a second, but it's still not near like the, the 40s the Mac was getting on High Sierra. So this is a downgrade. Easy, 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 easy. And now that we updated Mac OS, Steam should work, right? I mean, we're not gonna have any access to 32-bit apps, but uh, I guess we'll see what we can do. Steam would like to record this computer screen and audio. For what? No. I clicked show only games that run on Mac OS, and you have Counter-Strike 2, which this isn't even CS2, it's CSGO, which doesn't work anymore, and you got Who's Your Daddy? So we got a real robust library over here. This is kind of off topic, but this is really just an Apple moment. Macs are great for getting work done, and I like the OS better than Windows, but when it comes to games... I mean, you don't even need Windows, actually, just use Linux. That's actually a great use case for these older Intel Macs, being able to boot pretty much every operating system you need. You can get Windows, you can get Linux, and you can get Mac OS, even though it's it's kind of just going to run like shit if it's too old. So that's Mac OS Sequoia on the Mac Mini mid-2011. It's a good way to breathe life into this Mac if you still need to use updated apps today. However, if you try to multitask on this thing and use more than one app at one time, the CPU is just going to grind to a halt. If you were actually going to daily drive an old Intel Mac today, honestly, I would just go with Mac OS Monterey with open core legacy patcher. That way you still get the modern like continuity and handoff features, but you don't like sacrifice performance too much by running like the absolute maximum you can because I mean like look at this, there's like glitches everywhere. Anyways, thanks for watching and let me know down in the comments what other Macs do you want me to take a look at in the future so I can look at them on their Mac software they can run and then the real Mac software they can run with legacy open core. Alright, I'll see you later.